Welcome to the beautiful Pegasus Stables. A Group 1 winner has been sent out of here every year for the last four years. And there have been plenty more before that. Going back to Soviet Song, up to the likes of Society Rock, the top sprinter, and most recently, Ribbons. And take a look at this. 17 spanking new boxes. Spacious, perfectly built. And we're going to find out more about them right now from the governor of Pegasus. It is, of course, the man I call the skeleton man. He is James Fanshaw. And James, wow, these boxes are something else. Well, we've been finished now for three weeks, and uh, it's really good to, to have them and uh, that they're great. And uh, what we need now is some winners to come out of them. What I see when I look in them, this is Magic Hurricane, incidentally. He's the most progressive handicapper. We'll get on to him in a minute. But most horse boxes, you probably fit one horse, two horses in max. You could almost fit most people's stable in this. I mean, they're huge and spacious, aren't they? Yeah, well, it's in keeping with the rest of the yard. Um, the original part was built by Fred Archer, and uh, it's a it's, um, beautiful south-facing yard, and uh, this is sort of uh, hopefully up to his standard. And uh, they're, they're on a curve, so all the horses can see each other. They're well-ventilated, and, uh, you know, something I've always wanted to do. You've always had a yard that's immaculate, but this just shows that you still mean business, that, you know, we haven't seen the last of Vanshaw. There's a lot more to come. Well, I just, um, after uh, last season, we, um, we had a sort of uh, one or two sort of things go wrong. And then when um, seal of approval won the group one, Kipco, Phillies, Phillies and Mayors at Ascot, I thought, uh, right, let's give it a go. And um, we needed sort of 20 more boxes. And so we, I've always wanted to build a round yard in the middle of the main yard. And uh, this is what we've done. Of course, the, the advantage of the round yard is these horses can see each other very clearly. So, you know, they could, they've got something moving that they can enjoy all the time. Well, I wouldn't be happy if you were my next door neighbour, Matt, you know, but uh, if, you, if you've got a good looking <laughs> well, This is other. going so well, James. <laughs> they, they can all see each other and uh, they're not, you can see they're lovely and relaxed as well. So, uh, but the main thing is the ventilation, the space and, uh, um, and uh, you know, warm in, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. I was next door to Magic Hurricane. Hopefully I'll be giving him a bit of a boom and a yee-haw from time to time. He's progressive and he, he ran well at Haydot, didn't he, in the, in the Palisator race early in the season. He's got some entries, I see, uh, in the future. Where, where are we like to see the Hurricane next? Um, I'm not sure. He's, he could well go for um, a conditions race at Doncaster um, on the Wednesday of Doncaster. Um, he's, uh, and he's got some handicap entries at Haydock and, um, uh, and Doncaster as well. But we're just slightly stuck between a listed race and... Um, um, you know, top of the handicap, but he's hopefully a nice horse. He likes a bit of ease in the ground, and he's very effective from um, sort of 10 to a mile and a half. But uh, I feel there's more to come from him. Let's make our cameraman do some work and go and head over to the, to the big guns. Cause in many ways, Magic Hurricane James is sort of a typical fan horse. I know you've had lots of Group 1 winners, but the progressive handicappers, you seem very well at sort of placing them sort of and getting them sort of moving up the handicap well. Well, I think if, if you've got a nice horse... Um, a lot depends on, on what level they start. You know, if, if, if you sort of start off 70, that's great. But um, um, sometimes the handicapper makes up your mind for you. You know, if he has them sort of in high, they've got to be good or, or you might as well sell them. So, um, but it's great to have a horse that, um, that you could plot a sort of campaign for. Um, you know, if you've got a horse that you feel is a nice horse and has got a pound or two in hand, you, it's, it's great fun just to um, try and sort of look... So it's three months down the line rather than just sort of going from one naught sixty five to the next naught sixty five. You are sort of as we just edged left here, I'm just spawning my cameraman. Uh, do we um are you a sort of program book trainer? Do you enjoy sitting in bed late at night as sort of Martin Pipe used to do trawling in fact I remember Martin used to take it into his jacuzzi with the missus and plough through the program. But do you enjoy that part of the game? You've got to, you know, you've got to keep looking. I'm not I'm a bit of a sort of technophobe when it comes to the computers and stuff and I still have the, the original calendars and um and the program, but you've got to keep looking um, because if you don't look, someone else will. This, I think, is your latest Group One winner, Ribbons, and it was literally like watching Pegasus. I think she she's clearly learned from the name of your yard. <laughs> she's 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 always looked nice, Philly, and Group Ones are, uh, are hard to come by, and uh, you know, really grateful she she did so well. Uh, she's always looked nice at home, but um, we've ducked and dived a lot this year. Um, uh, because of the firm ground, you know, she would have run, run a listed race at Salisbury 10 days before if the ground had been a bit, a little bit easier. Um, but because the, um, the Romane is for four-year-olds and upwards and she likes soft ground, uh, um, Elite and Tony Hill let me take her, let me take her to France and uh, it's paid off. What do you think? I mean, she's still very lightly raced. What do you think her ultimate distance will be? Well, she, she's, um, you know, she's, her, her dam is a full sister to Soviet song, so... 
um, I've always felt that a mile, you know, was going to be her sort of trip. And then she, the back end of last year, she looked like she was going slightly outpaced for a fraction of the race, and uh, she'd be suited by a mile and a quarter. And this year, she definitely looked like she'd be suited by a mile and a quarter. I, I think was you know she showed such a good turn of foot on that ground, mm. over over ten. I don't think we'll be going beyond that at the moment. But um, and even a heavy ground mile, you'd think she would cope with, judged by that speed yeah, she showed. Yeah, she she you know she she can travel at any pace. You know she's a great traveller and um, and you know she She's got some fine teeth. As well. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but um, you know ho hopefully we can keep her right because you know she's always been immature and hopefully there'll be a bit more improvement. And we think we're gunning now for Ascot next. I think I think she's more. We entered her in the opera yesterday, and uh, I think that'll probably be her race, her next race, and. Uh, you know, because it's a big step up, you know, to go to go to Ascot, especially it will be, it's usually soft there, probably quite good to find this year, but uh, um, I just think the opera, the style of racing and the track will really suit her. Yeah, most progressive horse. I think that day, I think it was at Salisbury she won, and she was about three to one off a mark of 70 or something. Uh, certainly somewhere anyway. In Goodwood, the, Goodwood yeah. yeah. And yeah. she was a three to one shot. That should build your next 17 boxes, I'd imagine. <laughs> well, I'm not a brave enough investor when it comes right. to that sort of thing, but um, she's, uh, you, know, you know, she's going the right way and uh, um, hopefully there's more to come. And if she wants to have a look at another good horse, she can just move over here. Thank you very much for showing us the great ribbons. Group one winner for Fanshawe for 2014. Here we have the 2013 Group 1 winner, Seal of Approval, who was a little bit of, I suppose, a surprise for some at, at Ascot, but always been a talented horse. Yeah, she's another one who just loves, she just loves to get um, her toe in. You know, she, she's a different horse with some cut in the ground. She's taken a long time to come to herself this year. Um, you know, she, she, she ran a good race in the Yorkshire Cup, and then she was very disappointing up at Haydock, but ran much better at Newby last time. Um, I feel she's come out that race really well. And she's got some, um, she, I'm sort of aiming for the, for the Park Hill with her. Um, we get also given an entry in the Verme as well. But, um, you know, she's going the right way now. And uh, I think the ground will really dictate where we go next with her. But her real target is to have a, to defend her crown um, in the Kipco Phillies and Mares on the 18th of October. And she, just by looking at her here, she, she, we can see her sort of head out of the box here, but she, she looks a bigger type to ribbons, a slightly different type in stature. Yeah, she, she's, she's a big, scopey, um, authorised filly and um, you know she's you know she, uh, when she's when she's when she doesn't when she's not looking 100% you know she looks quite sort of lean and mean but um, she's starting to really look well now and um, and looks you know she look, she's looking well so um, I just hope she gets her conditions in the autumn Fingers crossed great to see seal of approval and just look to the right of the box here we see this little plaque the Taoiseach who of course was the Reynolds Town Chase winner in 1998. And as we head off and have a look at one of your stairs, James, we can have a talk about the jumping because, of course, you have been very much involved in, in the jumps world. Orlawa Troisième was champion hurdle winner. Um, Royal Gate, champion hurdle winner. And I know some people will claim, maybe yourself, that you train Crebensis, although, of course, just in case Sir Michael Stout's listening, we better not say that. But as we just walk back past these magnificent boxes again, the jumping game's been good to you been really good to me and it, it's great fun and um you know it, it's uh, to have a it, it training is all all, all about uh, training winners and but having a class horse in your yard and um you know you never get a more classier horse than royal gate he was he was um a brilliant horse and my regret there was after he won the champion hurdle we didn't have a crack at the gold cup with him because you know he still worked absolutely brilliantly um but uh, you know it's it's having a class horse in your yard whether it's a flat horse or a jumper that's what the game's all around Interesting you say that, because Royal Gate obviously w was an exceptional class-wise hurdler, um, as was sort of the likes of Crebensis, I suppose. But um, there isn't a massive gulf between a Gold Cup horse and a top hurdler, is there, if, if they've got a bit of speed about them? Well, I think, um, you know, Willie Mullins shows that all the time with um, his good stare. So, yeah, um, Simenon. Yeah. Simenon. So, you know, th there isn't. You know, you've got to have plenty of speed to, to win at Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah. The horse we're about to go and see probably is a horse that hasn't got plenty of speed, high jinx, but he's a he's a funny stare. I call him a funny stare. You'll you'll have other reasons to to say why he does what he does. But he's he was a gutsy winner. Well, I say gutsy winner. He won at Maison Lafitte last time by a head when he was on sort of one side of the track. Yeah, he's he. You know, to be fair to you know people sort of question him a bit, but to be fair to him, he was never right last year. Um, he got, he got too heavy, had a few little niggles, and um, we gelled him in the winter, and he's been really consistent this year. And we've been 
avoiding firm ground with him. It was great to get him winning at um, Maison Lafitte last time, and he's come out of the race really well. And, um, you know, I made me for the, just hope we get the right ground for him in the Doncaster Cup because I have a feeling that he's slightly better going left handed. He loves those galloping tracks like York and Doncaster. It's uh, unfortunate we couldn't run at. Um, Here he is. Here he comes. We couldn't Hello, hijinks. We couldn't run in the Lonsdale, but, but it just dried out too much there for him, you know. But um, I'm is he a nice horse? Is he a is no, he's he... top man? Yeah, is he's, he's yeah. lovely. He is yeah. I thought he would be a real horror biter, sort of nasty animal, but he's not at all, is he? No, he might bite me now, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's more likely to go for me. I think he's a gent. He's a gent, and he's he's he's, he's, he's you know he deserves to win a win a decent race, this fella. I mean, he's getting on a bit now, I suppose. But would, would he have ever jumped anything in his life? Do you think, if you'd asked him? Um, I think, you know, that, that could be a possibility in the future with him. Could it? Yeah, it could be, yeah. So, um, that bombshell. I don't know, but let's get the flat season out of the way with first, you know. But uh, he's been lightly raced this season. And he's a lot easier to train now as a gelding because he's sort of, um, 25 kilos lighter. Just to explore that possibly a little bit. You might give him a little school at the end of the season, would you? Or? Well, I have to talk to the owner about that right. first. But, um, you know, it's... Uh, let's call him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, um, well, he's... he's... And he'll head to Doncaster. As you say, he's run yeah. well in the Doncaster Cup. Before. Yeah, he's, he's been second in it twice. And um, uh, no doubt, um, Ed Dunlop will be very pleased with Time's Up's uh, run at York. And um, he'll be looking to defend his crown as well. So, it, um, you know, I'm looking forward to running him there. James, we've seen those spanky new boxes. But anyone worried that their horse is in one of your old boxes should always remember the brass, as you can see on the door here at James, is, is always polished to perfection. I mean, you... Keeping a clean yard, obviously, is important from the point of view of health, but you, you do pride yourself on the fact that this yard looks spanking most of the time. Yeah, most not of, all the time. Not all the time, I'm afraid it doesn't, but uh, we try and keep it that way because, uh, you know, I fred, feel Fred Archer, who built his always around, and uh, he sort of niggles me a bit uh, if we're not keeping it up to scratch. Well, I suspect, judged by what we've seen, James, there'll be another Group 1 or in 2015 as well, so keep up the good work. Well, I'm working on 2014 as well. So uh, thank you very much, Matt.